to another Door Claire action figure video. Today I'm taking a look at the Axie Toys 12 Bones Cowboy 2B variant. Huge thank you to Axie Toys for sending this over for review. It is always an honor to be included amongst the other reviewers when these things are being sent out to channels and especially mine being very small. It very much appreciate that. So thank you Axie Toys for sending this over for this early look. So let's take a look at the cowboy with this bull head scope. It almost gives me like a Chicago Bulls kind of thing going on there. And then you have this Guernica <laughs> bull over here from Pablo Picasso's masterpiece, which has some, you know, I think some implications in terms of what the symbolism is there. But you have this crazy awesome denim jacket, which to me might be the highlight of the figure. This is just a really cool piece. Very nicely done. And then he's got jeans on as well. I know the other version has like different colors and stuff, but it's like the same figure, the same everything, just with like a beige coat and I think maybe a white bull head and, you know, some other just colors going on. And there we are nice and close on that head sculpt, which does have an articulated jaw over here. And some nice, like, glossiness over on the, the, like, fading of that shade on the horns over here. I do think it would have been kind of cool if they had done the horns in, like, a, a bone color, because then it would have matched even more with that Chicago Bulls look. And if you look closely at the eyes, he has X's in his eyes. So the storyline, it's a little difficult to follow because it's in translation, but it's essentially like a post-apocalyptic world, and then these dead characters like this bull and then there's the mouse character that to me looks like a mickey mouse homage type thing but this bull and that mouse are like scavenging in the post-apocalyptic world and looking for what i think they're looking for food um it's hard to say but they're looking for life and they're sort of scavenging through the the trash of the post-apocalyptic world which kind of brings me to the bull on the chest right this is from the guernica by pablo picasso which came after the city of guernica was bombed by nazis essentially and it was a protest piece and you know there's certain symbolism here with the bull and the chaos and the destruction so you know i kind of wonder if this is you know maybe somehow tied to hong kong and the protests that happened a few years ago this being a piece made by folks from hong kong right Maybe that's a stretch, but the idea that Guernica is in here also ties to artwork and the fact that this is very much an art piece. So the connection might be as simple as that, just, just that this is a boutique kind of designer piece uh, figure here. And it kind of lives up to that feel. Like this definitely has like really smooth, nice joints. All of the fabric feels nice quality. It just feels like a good figure to me in terms of the quality and the and the feel. And of course, later on, I'll get all the clothes off so you can see the body underneath. We'll look at the heights and all that. Um, one thing I didn't show is the boots. So the boots are like a half boot and the ankle peg is pretty high up, which makes for posing can be like a little bit weird, but a really nice sculpture on those cowboy boots. Um, would have been neat if they somehow could have done classic cowboy boots that kind of go all the way up. But I understand the need for the articulation and then... When you tuck them out of the jeans, no one's the wiser, right? And then his hands are interesting. They're like very oversized and it almost looks like a pair of gloves on him that have like bone structure on the outside, like maybe like armored gloves that kind of looks like bones. And like I said, the jacket does feel like it's the highlight and it's got that classic, I don't know, 70s jacket, like denim jacket with the fur across the top there. And it doesn't feel like the fur is like flying off or anything like that. It feels pretty good in terms of like stability and just durability on the jacket. And you have these little buttons and things. This one's a little loose right here, but I don't think it's going anywhere and you don't have to use it for anything. So the fact that it's a little loose doesn't really mean much to me. And the white shirt underneath is a tank top, as you can see here. And there he is all zoomed out so you can get an overall look at the silhouette. And this dude is pretty tall, standing at just about seven and a quarter inches. Here he is next to a couple pretty tall Mezco figures, Gomez on the left, Nosferatu on the right. As you can see, he definitely towers over them. I'm not going to say he's out of scale with them because being a bull minotaur-esque type character, you would expect a character like that to be large. But just saying, he is a pretty big figure. And so that you can see him with some figures that are actually bigger than him. On the left is the NECA Warduke. On the right is the Cosmic Legion's Brute Scale Canox Vol. 
And some other familiar lines, here he is with a Mafex Superman from Dark Knight Returns and a Masterverse kit-bashed He-Man that has a custom head sculpt by Monster Machine Creations, painted by EM Custom Parts. And two more figures, here it is with the Animal Warriors of the Kingdom Tiberius and the Cosmic Legions Waltor with the Sligor head on there. For accessories, it does come with this other figure, essentially, and it does have a little bit of articulation, and you can fully take it apart. Like, you can remove this. The head can come out of here. If you wanted to put this back in and put something else inside, you could totally do that. Uh, you can also pop the backpack thing off. The arms swivel around, and you can pull those arms off as well. And then you also could pull the feet off if you want. So definitely some play options here. For customizing and messing around with it and then just a nice little close-up of that head sculpt here kind of ragdoll looking thing but yeah so that's a cool little accessory right there it's essentially another kind of designer style figure that just comes with this thing it does come with this static piece this cat right here that it seems like they found it in the trash and they're maybe going to eat it or use it for power or energy or something like that and so yeah, I mean, it's a nice little sculpted piece. Again, a little designer toy kind of thing just included with the figure. Then he does have the cowboy hat, which is magnetized. The magnet isn't super strong, but, you know, it'll it'll kind of stay there. But if you kind of start messing around with it, it's going to fall off. But if you're just holding the figure, it's not going to do much. Then it has this nicely decoed axe that has the edge of the blade looks sharp, you know? It's like a brighter silver here, and then it kind of fades into the darker colors and it's really rusted out and old and one neat thing about it is it's actually attached to a plumbing pipe so gives it a little character there as this post-apocalyptic weapon um, very flexible plastic so i don't really have any worries about this thing snapping or breaking but it does hold its straight you know shape too so that's really nice and then you got this little fish accessory, another static character type piece that I don't know what's going on here. If like the cat's going to eat the fish and then the bull's going to eat the cat and it's some sort of, you know, food chain situation going on in the post-apocalyptic world, but cool little pieces. Then it does come with a bottle of poison liquor, which is really funny coincidence because that's the brand I drink. It also comes with a little topper here, so it looks like the the liquid is pouring out of it, and then it also has like, I don't know, like a cap, I guess, for it. That's kind of in the shape of some kind of like demon skull head over here. It has like cat-like qualities too. But yeah, I guess, you know, it's like a, a topper or something, or, you know, a spirit coming out of the bottle or something like that. The set does come with a pair of gripping hands, a pair of sort of pointing or trigger finger hands that don't really have a use unless you have a weapon from another figure that you want to use. Here's how it fits with a Mythic Legions blaster pistol right here actually works pretty well. And then a third set of relaxed hands, again, in that same sort of skeleton glove look. As we get into articulation, I do want to point out that it does feel a little, um, at times it can feel a little wobbly, but it's not necessarily unstable. It's just a weird thing when you have the top of the boot being the ankle, it just kind of makes things a little high and it kind of floats around a little bit. And then there's a little bit of flex in the, in the hips and then in the torso a little bit that kind of make things wobble but not feel unstable right like it doesn't feel like it's going to fall down even though it just feels a little a little like wobbly you just got to kind of mess with the positioning to get it um you know where you want it to be for articulation you do have a double ball at the top of the neck there is no base of the neck articulation there it's just a solid piece but you do get a pretty good range of motion in that neck he can look up a little bit down really well cock his head side to side articulate that jaw twist all the way around so pretty good motion in the head shoulder can swing out this far and then up all the way around there's a twist at the top of the arm there's a double jointed elbow he can bring his arm all the way up to here which is probably more than enough range there then you do have a typical like split ball situation at the wrist lots of range there top of the torso has a ball joint and he can move around quite a bit and then a ball joint at the waist as well and just to reiterate the articulation and the joints are all very smooth this thing moves well and it holds its pose and it just feels really nice and premium and you know it has that import feel to it the only thing i did have to heat up was the hands 
because they're very, very stiff. And I just wanted to make sure I didn't break anything trying to get the weapon in the hand when I was posing it. But those babies are stiff. And so back to the torso, if you want to see the full range, you can crunch forward a bit and then back quite a bit. And so, you know, you got a lot of fun articulation. It's not a, you know, it's not a Spider-Man range of articulation, but some pretty good movement in this figure. The legs can kick up quite a bit. It's, the pants can kind of hinder things a little, you know, like when one end of the pants is pulling on the on the front and it's like sort of preventing things. And there is a twist at the thigh, but it doesn't go outwards very far. It goes outwards like that far, but it can come inwards a lot. I'll take the clothes off in a minute so we can really see. And then you do have that ankle joint, which is kind of interesting because they did use the kind of wrist joint kind of thing where it's like that split ball articulation, which can be, you know, a little bit of a chore when trying to make sure it's put, it's in the right position and you're going to like rock the ankle. So just be careful there because it is a split ball on that ankle and it can only go one way. It can go forward or you can turn it and then it can go sideways. And there's a couple steps along the way of disassembly. Here's how he looks without the jacket on and just the, the just like the sleeveless t-shirt there. You know, he's very skinny. Like you can see, here's the here's the articulation there without the the jacket on there. There's a very thin frame of a body that they've made here. Getting the pants off, there's a little Velcro here that will loosen things up so that you can slide those right off. And then, so here's the body fully removed. It almost kind of feels like an anatomy doll or something. You know, it's not, it's not really a human. It's like a, it's like a weird kind of thing going on, but I like it. It's got a lot of style to it. Even just this bare body and a great, uh, great joints and the movement just feels really good. And I will show you that the reason why the legs don't rotate out is when he's standing upright it does get stopped by this top portion of the thigh. If you kick the leg forward, you can rotate the leg. So if you wanted to have them in that kind of a position, that's possible. So just kind of, it's worth taking it apart to see how it moves and stuff and then putting it back and then messing around with it again. And finally, I thought I would just try out a few swaps and see what we can do with this figure and see what fits and what doesn't. First up, here's a Gomez head, and I think size-wise it works. It's it's a it's a loose fit. That's the the peg is going to be small, which is good. If you're if you're doing head swaps, I think you want the destination body to have a small peg because you could always just pad it out. It's a lot harder to get something to fit if the peg is too big. But I mean, with Gomez, I think it works pretty well. I mean, Gomez's head is pretty big, so even though this figure is large, I think the Gomez head looks. Pretty darn good there. And then next up, we do have a Mythic Legion's head, and this is kind of hilarious, but also kind of awesome. Like, this looks really good. I feel like Atlas would totally wear that jacket. Of course, the peg hole is large, and you got to use, like, some sticky tack in there. But, you know, it, it does actually, size-wise, look pretty darn good. And then here it is with a G.I. Joe classified head. Way too small, but, yeah, thought I'd give it a try. And the last swap I wanted to try, Larry from the podcast was wondering how this would look on Logan, but it's just a little too big. You can see it's just, he's kind of swimming in it. It just doesn't look right. It's just a bit too big for Logan. Um, that would have been really cool, though, if that had worked out well. Like, it's it's almost there, but definitely a pretty large jacket for Logan. And if you're going to swap it onto anything, you got to make sure it's a, a decent sized figure, I would say. Anyway, final thoughts. This is a very unique figure. They put a lot of love into it. All of the tailoring, the joints feel really nice. It's just a solid release. Um, he's very tall. So if you're going to try to mix him in with the other line, just keep that in mind. But he does, for me, fit in with my Gomez stuff. I think this is going to go right in there with Gomez and all the other, you know, Mezco kind of Rumble Society stuff and the, you know, the original IP type stuff. Very cool figure. Thanks again to Axie Toys for sending this over and including me in this review. I appreciate it very much. If you're looking to pick this figure up, I did put links in the description below. Thanks for watching. And until next time, may the force be with you.